In this video, we're going to take a look at the pivot controls and the local versus world transformation uh, buttons available here in the toolbar. They're right next to the four transform tools that we took a look at in the previous video. Now, the first one of these is our pivot button. Now, what is this actually going to do for us, Lee? Well, actually, both the pivot and local are going to work together in concert with your transform tools. So what's going to happen with pivot is, depending on where you select, it will toggle between the pivot point of the object that you have selected or the center of that object. So if I click this, now currently I have this bench over here selected, and uh, its pivot point is pretty much at the location of the fire. So if I click on our pivot button, that switches over to center, and now we can move it from the center of the object. So if it feels a little weird having the pivot so far away, and you'd much rather uh, work from the center of the object, you can do that. Now, as Lee says, this does work in concert with all of our other transformation tools. So if I switch over to rotate, you can see now the rotate gizmo is right in the middle of our bench, which is kind of handy unless you're doing a really wacky rotation like I just did. So that's a quick look at our pivot button. It just jumps it to either transforming from the actual location of the pivot point or from a new pivot that is centered up on the object. Now, what's this next button do? Well, the local world um, toggle is going to di dictate how you're going to transform your object. If you have it in local space, and it's uh, helpful if you switch over to move. All right, well, I'll do that. I'll, and because we're in a toolbar video, I'll come up and click on the move tool instead of following my instincts of hitting the W key. Okay, now if you scroll or move your camera so we're looking more at a top-down angle. Actually, let me hit F to frame up on it and look down like so. Okay. Now, if you look at it right now, we're in local mode. So that means the pivot is rotated in relation to the object itself. so And it's a little hard to visualize here because this bench was rotated in the model itself. So it's it's not like uh, the... Uh, it's It has been rotated just a little bit here inside of Unity. Inside of Maya where it was built, it was tilted a little more. If we switch over to this bench, which I'll do just for your example, this might be a little bit easier to visualize. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yep. So if you look on this particular bench, the the uh, long way of the bench or its longest axis mm -hmm. is up in that or along the x axis, where the short um, width of the bench is along the z axis, and the height of the bench is up along the y axis. Now, if you look at your scene gizmo, you'll see that the world axis is actually um, close to where the um, z axis of our object is. Right. So if you were trying to move this in world, you're moving the bench along its normal axis, but not in the same direction of the world. If we toggle. So let's toggle over to global. Now, now everything corresponds to what we see over here in the scene gizmo. Exactly. Now, another way to look at this is a, a lot easier way to maybe to visualize it is if we take this bench, I'm just going to slide it up into the air so we have a floating bench all of a sudden, and I'll jump over to the rotate tool and give this thing some wacky sort of rotation. Now, if I go back to the move tool, check it out. We're currently moving in global, and take a look at how our move tool is aligned. X still points down the direction of the world X axis, Z points down the direction of the, the world Z axis, and the same with Y. But if we switch over to local, now everything corresponds with the local rotation of that bench. So if we know we need to slide in this direction, we'd want to make a motion like that in local mode. So that is a quick look at swapping the location of your pivot from center to the location of the actual pivot itself and the difference between local and global modes as seen here inside the toolbar, which is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.